If you're interested in the Sony a6400 for vlogging, today's video is probably gonna be good for you. We're gonna be testing this camera out to see if it performs as good as all the hype has been saying. Welcome to Ben's Guide, your guide to the best news, reviews, and how-tos from the world of photography and video. Today, we're getting hands-on with the Sony a6400 to see if it really performs as well as it's been touted to. The three key main features that every vlogging camera needs to excel in are these. You've got to have a flip screen for starters. This is so you can see yourself when you're talking to the camera. And this is because you don't want to drift in and out of the frame. This could be a right pain in the ass if you're looking back at your footage and then suddenly seeing that it's no good to use. Number two is great autofocus. When you're holding your camera at arm's length, you need to know that your focus is nailed. You can't always see if you're in focus when you're holding your camera at arm's length. So it's so important that your autofocus is nailed and that you could just trust that your camera is gonna do a great job. Finally, the camera that you're using for vlogging needs to be lightweight. If you're a vlogging channel on YouTube or any other video platform, and you're holding your camera out there regularly for long periods of time, you need it to be light. Because if it's gonna be heavy, you're gonna be getting an uncomfortable achy arm, and that could even result in you dropping the camera and then losing your frame. So these are the three key components that I always look for in any vlogging camera. Now, of course, there are other features that you need, but these are the three key components which I always look for first. Okay, so I'm really excited about getting out and actually testing this camera out to see if it's any good at vlogging. So we're gonna go out the studio for a little bit now, test it out and see how it performs. Let's start with the screen. The A6400 has a flip round screen which enables you to turn the screen around and see yourself from recording. Very important when you're vlogging. Sony has opted for this kind of articulation instead of Canon's side screen. I honestly like the screen at the top. I feel like it's more of a natural place to look when you're checking you're in frame. The screen movement is a little stiff when moving, but really it's nothing major. Though the screen is in a more natural place to look, opening to the top of the camera provides a bit more of an issue. It makes using the top horseshoe mount pretty much redundant. If I place the rig here like this, I'm now blocking my view and the flip screen is pretty much pointless. Of course, there is a solution to this rather strange issue that Sony has provided the A6400 users with. See, you may not be able to use it here, the horseshoe mount, but you can fix an owl bracket to the bottom and then you can strap your mic on to the side of the owl bracket. This is gonna completely solve the issue for you and it means that you'll be able to use all your accessories on this owl bracket that you would have used on the horseshoe mount. Onto the focus. Having a good autofocus is absolutely one of the most important parts of vlogging. You cannot walk along talking to the camera, shooting a scene if you don't know if you're in focus. Not doing so can result in ruining all of your footage. Up to now, I've always vlogged with Canon, and this is because the autofocus on Canon cameras are exceptional. I think most people know about this, it's no secret, but dual pixel autofocus is the best. Well, that is until maybe today, but it really is incredible. So we thought a great way of checking the autofocus on the A6400 and seeing if it's really up to the job would be to compare it against Canon's dual pixel autofocus. So comparing both of them together, we'll be really seeing exactly where Sony is at now with their autofocus, and if it's good enough for locking onto your face when you're out there vlogging. This is the Canon's dual pixel autofocus. So currently I'm walking around some woodland and there's lots of things which could actually take the focus away, certain distractions. So we're gonna see exactly how the autofocus system works with face tracking and dual pixel autofocus. As you can see, the dual pixel autofocus holds onto the face so perfectly all the way through this clip, having no issues 
locking onto anything else in the scene. Okay, so now this is the same test, but with the A6400. And this is with the Sony eye autofocus and the face tracking switched on. So let's take this thing for a little spin. So I do really take this for a spin here, as you can see. I'm spinning the camera around, testing that it locks onto the eyes and the face. Now I've got to be honest, it's perfect. It doesn't lose focus at all. Now let's see how quick they find the face. This is the dual pixel autofocus from Canon. Bit of a delay there, and once again, another slight delay. This is the Sony. As you can see on both, the A6400 finds the face and eyes straight away. Number three is weight. Now this is often overlooked when a lot of people are searching for their ideal vlogging camera, but it really is important. Walking around carrying a heavy setup, well it's a young man's game, and I'm not young anymore. Also, it's just really not necessary. There is so many smaller and mirrorless cameras out there which provide all of the features that you need for a vlogging setup. So really, gone are the days of having to use a big DSLR to record all of your footage with. Compare the size now of the Sony A6400 against a medium-sized DSLR. You can see that it's considerably smaller. Now the A6400, it's not the lightest mirrorless camera body I've ever held, but it feels really solid and well made. And it's a lot lighter than the DSLR. My usual setup is a Gorillapod and the camera. Sometimes I use an external mic, but most times I actually record separately through a lav mic to an audio input. So far I've shared with you the main three key components which I always look for in a vlogging camera. And so far the Sony A6400 has really lived up to its hype. Of course though, there are more features. About five or 10 years ago, the world of vlogging was all about walking around with a camera and just talking to it as you walked. I mean, the idea is pretty much the same, but now things have changed. These camera systems have a whole bunch of features inside them, which provide video creators with so many more options. This means that we now get to watch more visually appealing videos on platforms like YouTube. I honestly think this is brilliant. Having all these features means that you now essentially have a small video creation machine which just ticks all the boxes. Now the Sony A6400 has got all these features covered. So you have time-lapse feature, you also have 120 frames per second in full HD. This means that you can get that lovely slow motion B-roll. You can get the cinematic shots as well. And you've also got picture profiles. This means that you can use HLG or S-Log. Now, if you don't know what they are, it basically means you're filming in a flat profile and then you can color grade your footage after and give it that extra cinematic look. Everything about this camera for vlogging is really superb. It has everything that you will ever need in this tiny package. But no camera is perfect. So I feel like it's only right that I discuss with you the few issues which I found with the Sony A6400. One of the issues I came across with the Sony A6400 was its limited touchscreen. Now, this probably doesn't sound like much of an issue to a lot of people watching, but when I vlog, I always have my screen, obviously, fully articulated like this. Now you imagine when you're talking to the camera, sometimes you can have exposure issues or things that you need to change. Now on a Canon camera, you could just touch the screen and change these settings. Unfortunately, with the Sony A6400, with its very limited touchscreen capabilities, you can't do this. And though it seems like a really small thing and I'm, maybe I'm nitpicking, it's something which I always do. I always just change my settings there. So for me, it is an issue, but I understand that a lot of people watching this may not be concerned with that. They don't mind just taking the camera out of the position that they were holding it in, putting it down somewhere, flipping the screen, and changing the settings. The next issue is there's no camera stabilization. Such a shame. But once again, this is not a big issue. I've heard a lot of people going on about this and just saying that it's terrible that Sony haven't put it in. And yes, it is a shame. It's a shame they didn't put IBIS into the A6400. But if you're serious about video, 
and you want to get that stabilized footage, then you can always choose a lens which has image stabilization built in. There's loads of lenses out there which offer this now. In fact, I own seven professional lenses and five of them have image stabilization. The other two are old. So straight away, the odds are in your favor. I'm gonna sum up this review right now of the Sony A6400. If you're watching this video and you really want to know if it's good enough for vlogging, the answer to that is absolutely yes. As a vlogging camera, it ticks all the boxes. You've got the fully articulated screen, you've got the great autofocus, you've also got a lightweight camera which offers all of the features you'll ever need to make a great vlog with. To add to this, it's an affordable price. The only thing I will say are the few issues I discussed earlier. Get yourself a lens which has the image stabilization built in and that'll solve the problem. And if you wanna take it to the next level, you can of course look at things like gimbals to get even smoother cinematic style footage. I wanna know what you guys think of the Sony A6400. Leave me some comments in the comments section of this video and then we can talk about it after the video is finished. I wanna thank everyone for watching today. It means a lot that you come on the channel and you watch these videos and support me. And whatever you do for the rest of today, make sure it's a good one.